Okay, g'day guys and welcome back to another Obsidian video. Tonight we're going to do a, uh, a topic that's been requested by my patrons, so thank you guys. They've uh, had a bit of a vote on what content they would like to see uh, getting developed and uh, so far the uh, ability to map relationships is coming out at number one. So let's dive into this. Uh, obviously for anyone who's coming from Realmworks you should be aware that it did support relationships. You could add a relationships to a topic. And uh, obviously coming over to a, a note system, it's not something you think it would uh, support, but uh, it absolutely does. And um, surprisingly, it actually supports it out of the box. So you don't need a specific plugin for this. It works using something called Mermaid. Um, and look, there's, there's plenty of documentation online about Mermaid. Mermaid is not just something that gets used inside of uh, Obsidian. Um, it's it's mermaid-js and it's it's basically used by a number of different tools to create I guess you would say flowcharts and different different sort of diagram options and look it's going to go to level of depths that we don't need it all right in our campaign management for tabletop RPGs I uh, you might use it I don't know I'm mean, sure someone will find a find an example of something they can do that's really cool but like you know this thing supports a lot of different types of charts and uh, yeah, it's got some interesting functionality. I am going to say this though. This is not necessarily easy functionality. Uh, this is more of an advanced topic. So if you don't need relationships and you're new to Obsidian and you're still learning how to make headings and format basics, uh, maybe maybe skip this video for a while and come back to it when you feel uh, a bit more confident. Um, but for those of you who are obviously keen to understand how relationships work, let's jump over to the tool and uh, I guess let's let's have a look and see what it offers. All right, so in front of me you can see I've got my Demo Vault 2 open and I've actually already got some examples here. Now these are not examples that I've written, I've copied them from another YouTube um, content provider uh, and he's got some fantastic examples and we're gonna, I'm going to provide a link to his video so you can go through and have a uh, bit of a watch because that's what I watched in order to get my head around the, the functionality. But let's just start by going through the type of different things that this uh, mermaid does enable. So you can see here, this is sort of like a basic flowchart, and I think this is the one that's going to be the more use, uh, the more usable one for us. All right, so this is what we just call a graph, I think it's called. Um, this is a left to right graph. You can see that it starts on the left and moves right. Um, and you can see the ability here is that we've actually got these able to be linked to things. And that seems to be unique from the other ones that I've seen so far. I haven't validated that completely yet, but I haven't been able to make links on other things, just these at this point. Then you've got these other types of uh, of graphs. And look, I don't know the names of all these types of graphs, but uh, I, I don't use them all. Uh, but you can see like this looks to me like a transit line. Um, if you were playing a futuristic campaign, maybe you could use something cool there for representing stops at a railway train. Uh, you can see this one's got some nice relationship sort of lines showing you what's going in. You can see it's sort of like a flow of where work is flowing. Uh, it does support pie charts. They're very easy to make. If you need a pie chart in your game, uh, I don't know, it might come up. Uh, more of the, it gets into very technical. Um, diagrams to be honest and I guess people are using it for documentation of um, I guess IT diagrams and all that sort of stuff architectural type of things. Um, Gantt charts um, I mean I always appreciate a Gantt chart I was a project manager for a while so I certainly appreciate them I don't know if I need them in my game but it might be useful there's more of probably an IT sort of uh, style there as well and then this one here is interesting this is like a working day sort of uh, visualization uh, you can see this one's got like different elements of where the person was the tasks they did and their levels of satisfaction while they were doing that so um, yeah look it's it's certainly uh, got a lot of different functionality inside this tool and as I said at the start I think this is going to be more than we need let's jump into edit mode though and have a look so you can see this example here has a lot of code going on and this is code heavy guys like this isn't just dragging and dropping around to make your relationships this is code heavy um, because you are writing everything and this is the one I think we're going to focus on here um, you can see the code he's declaring some variables everything between the percent um, percents is basically comments which basically means it's not doing anything it's just there to help us understand the code 
Um, so you can see here that he's creating some uh, some variables. He's making A link to text, B link to text, and C link to text. This is our linking. Um, and to give you an idea of what we, we could do there, I think we could probably take bro in there. Um, and then we can actually click that and go to bro. All right, so the general functionality, it's not that hard to edit once you understand what you're doing. Here's the linkage between uh, different things. Um, and then again, I guess we've got some, uh, some code there. This part here is what's making the links work. Um, and this is actually just a style, uh, so you can change the, the visual effects of it. Um, but yeah, you can see all these different ones. So what we'll do is we'll show you where to find all these. Um, I don't think it's worth going through all of them in detail with this video because I don't think a lot of them are going to be uh, directly applicable to our need. Um, but for those of you who are, you know, who are interested in finding out more, we'll certainly show you where to do that. So. What I have here um, is just a link to the GitHub where this site comes from. So um, obviously I've done a search for, for Mermaid um, and there is some really interesting stuff in here. If you want to get into the nitty gritty details of this, then you know there's lots of documentation out there. Um, and the good thing about some of this di um, documentation is it actually provides graphs and shows you how these things work. Keeping in mind that this is not specifically for Obsidian, it's just showing you the, the different sort of syntax in order to turn these on. And then obviously you'd need to apply the syntax over into Obsidian. But for the most part, it's pretty much the same. All right, then uh, there's, there's some other more examples here that I found online. Again, I like that they've got the pictures and they show sort of like what can be achieved with this. Again, it'll be uh, up to you guys to decide how you use this. But what I would recommend you do is uh, jump onto YouTube, uh, do a search for this comprehensive overview of using mermaid flowcharts in Obsidian. Now, this is the video that I had to watch by Brian Jenks. Um, this was really, really handy. Um, and he really stepped through uh, each type of uh, diagram and each type of visual that could be achieved in Obsidian. Um, and I basically went through that video step by step and had a real look. Um, and then what I've done is I've jumped in here and found that he had a link to, to this link here. Want to get your hands on my Obsidian templates? Well, he's got a link to it there and you can actually download his Obsidian Vault, um, which comes with all his templates and inside of there was where I found all of his templates um, that he uses to create all of his um, all of his, uh, his diagrams. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, if I jump over into his, uh, his vault, uh, I really like his, his layout here and his pictures. I think that's really cool. But if we click new note for now, and I think it's control shift I in his vault, brings up the templates. And what I can do here is type in mermaid. All right, and you can see here that we've got a list of all the different templates. We can just click that one there and it gives us a link um, to, to basically how this is achieved. And look, I've just copied it for the sake of this video, but this is where you can get it and you can obviously get the code. So with that in mind, I guess the next question is how do we take something like this and sort of make it useful for us in the case of, um, of tabletop RPGing? And, you know, for me, it's, it's usually about creating relationships between NPCs. Um, I, I do like to create relationships between buildings in a town and the NPCs who live in them. I found that's really useful when I'm running my games. Uh, because what I do is I bring my flowchart up and it gives me a really quick way to sort of jump around. Um, when I was using Realmworks, I used to like the ability to sort of drag the nodes around and relink them if an NPC was moving around a bit. Um, I don't think it's going to be that simple in this tool. I, I, I kind of feel like this will be something you set up beforehand versus something you, you really play around live at the table with. So... With that in mind, though, let's just see how this gets done. So let's do a cut and paste of this code. Um, you can pause it here if you'd like, if you'd like to copy this over. Uh, alternatively, obviously, there'll be links to where you can get these um, in the description. So we'll jump over to my family. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit of a diagram here on how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm just pasting my, my code on the other screen. I'm going to type this out as we go. And we're going to start with this little uh, little um, I don't know what it's called, comma sign, it's next to the one key. Um, we type mermaid to trigger the fact that we're using the mermaid um, inf well, concept here. And we're going to do what we call a graph. 
help if I spell it right. Um, there's lots of different graphs you can do. Like the one we just saw previously is what we call a left to right graph, where the data moves from left to right. That's pretty simple. Uh, the one I kind of like doing um, that I used to use a lot in Realmworks is called a top down. So you do TD. All right. Now we need to sort of bring in the content that we want to link together. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a declaration uh, to say this is the content and we're going to link it to something. So I'm going to do A. And do square bracket uh, mum, and you can see I'm just writing the names of my, my um, notes over here. I'm going to do B, dad, C, sis, D, bro, um, E, what do we got? Bro's wife, and then F. The mailman. All right, so now we've declared them. Uh, we haven't actually created any relationships yet. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to end this code here. We're just going to jump into preview mode to see what happens. So you can see here they've declared them, uh, but there are no no sort of linkage between any of them yet. So they're just declared. So next, what we want to do <coughs> is we're going to find out how we link these. So um, what we want to do is we want to link mum to dad. So if we go A, we could do a line uh, to B. If we come in here, we can now see mum is linked to dad. We can come back in here and we can change it so that mum is linked with an arrow. I think we can even do the other way. No, did not like that one. I'll get the syntax for all of these uh, these different line types and paste them into the notes at some point as well. So, uh, yeah, we can put in the, the arrows. I, I found this other one here we can do with a line with a dot. All right, that makes a dotted line connection. So there's all sorts of these different sort of lines you can do and you just change the code between all of these. But if we want to get more complex, all right, so we have mum is linked uh, to dad. Uh, they're probably not a dotted line, they're, they're a solid relationship. So they're, they're to, they've got a solid line between them. Um, and now I want to be, uh, let's go A to C and A to D. So that mum is linked to the sister and the brother. All right, but now I also want to link dad <coughs> to sister. And I want to link dad to a brother. What does that look like? There we go. So dad is linked, mum is linked, they're linked. <coughs> it's now creating the links between. Now we get a bit more complex. So now we have D to the wife. All right. But the wife is sleeping around with the mailman. So therefore we have a dotted line relationship from the bro's wife to the mailman. All right. So you can see that's really working. Now you can see that there's no ability to click these at this point. All right, so we need to enable that. So the next part of what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to make it so we can click these. So we type class um, A, B, C, D, E, F. And we type internal dash link. End that with a uh, semicolon. And then you can add your colors and stuff here. Uh, I'll take the semicolon out because I don't need to finish there. What did I do? Da, da, da. Class ABC DEF internal link. Broke something, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just double check that we're linking. We've got our syntax right. We've got our 
brackets in there. Then we can do our linking and we know this all works. Looks like you can do this as well. So A to C and D. I'm just going to get rid of this bit. So the AND symbol worked quite nicely there. So we can go B to C and D and reduce our code quite significantly. But why is this not working? I'm just going to copy this version here that I have in. There we go. So I tried a different piece of code here. What I've done is I've typed class A internal link just for, for the A. But then what I did is I, I copied some code off of something else to see how their version works. As you can see, they, they really limit it. You got A, B, C. Oh, there we go. C. Oh, I put a space in there. I had it as that. Sorry, as that. You can't have a space. There we go. All right, so now what we have is we have the ability to mouse over these. All right, and of course we can control click these as well, and we can bring up the uh, the notes that are linked to it. So look, that there allows you quite easily to sort of, um, I guess, make a hierarchy um, together in order to sort of map out a relationship between, between people. It's not the only way you could map relationships. I'm going to be clear about that. I think there is another way using breadcrumbs as well. But if you wanted to create some sort of relationship chart, then this is certainly the way that you could do it. And of course, the uses for this are not just in relationships, right? You might have an adventure that you're mapping out the different paths that the players could go. Um, technically, you could probably even create a dungeon with this, right? And they use this to create your dungeon. You create relationships between all the rooms and you could technically create your own graphical um, sort of template of a dungeon and, and run it directly out of this this tool. I mean, you might use these dotted lines for a secret path. You might use these ones for a very obvious path, for example. Um, you could have an arrow for a one-way path that can't go backwards. I don't know, like, you know, use your imagination, I guess. You could you could do all sorts of things. So anyway, look, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, once you get your head around, obviously, the syntax, um, I would certainly recommend that uh, you use a template for these and you have some of these set up already so you can sort of copy the uh, the code and uh, I'll go through that in a future video because that's uh, starting I'm starting to really see the benefit of doing that. Um, obviously I had the idea of having the, uh, the markup language notes which is basically the same thing except with the uh, the templates you can actually press a hotkey brings up a list and you can type search for the, what you want to introduce and it can bring that code directly in and uh, it doesn't even have to be like a, a whole note it could just be part of a note for example so uh, I'm really starting to see the benefit of that and then yeah you can go through and, and link things out so I think that could be quite useful um, anyway that's that's how you obviously use uh, mermaid um, have a bit of play with it. As I said, isn't it? it is a bit more advanced. You need to obviously understand the syntax and get your head around how this all works. Um, but once you do it, it's, it's relatively easy to do. And I imagine you could go through and create some very complex sort of relationships here. Uh, quite simply, I would say. Um, you know, just make sure you link everything properly up here and then go to town on how this looks and make sure you put that bit in there in order to, to click it and open up your notes. So yeah. Anyway, if you are enjoying this content, please do like and subscribe. Um, big thanks to all of my uh, my patrons for supporting me uh, with obviously creating more content and for suggesting the creation of this one. Um, I think I am going to make another relationship video, by the way, but I'm going to do that probably from a breadcrumbs um, plugin instead of this uh, this mermaid one. Just show you another way you could do things. Um, breadcrumbs is a big, 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 big topic though. You could do all sorts with it. Uh, but yeah, do like and subscribe. Um, if you want to follow me, you can find me on Patreon. You can follow me on YouTube. Um, and yeah, be sure to obviously have a chat in the uh, in the Facebook group and let us know what it is that you guys are working on. If you've got any ideas for future videos, please do call out and let me know. So with that said, guys, thank you. Um, I will speak to you all on the forums.